Hello and welcome back. In part one, we set up a very basic example just to get an idea of how it works, but now we're going to start using this method to really dig into its potential. Okay, head back into the project we created in part one. For this part of the tutorial, we're going to reproduce this slit scanner fit comprised of organics. It's going to be anything from ink, paint, oil slick, or any organic material that you can find around the home. For now, we'll use an image from Google. I chose this as it looks pretty cool. Now you've downloaded the image, go ahead and place it into the composite shot, so just import. And in the animation shot, place it onto the timeline. Resize accordingly. And again, keyframe from right to left. We can use the same technique with mono adjustments to the slit animation shot and the particle simulator. So head back into composite shot 1. In your particle system general settings, change the particles per second to 60. And already you can see that it's actually forming a solid wall, but we want to make this a little bit more customizable for later on, so head down into your colour source and set texture colour to birth. Okay, things are slightly stretched right now, so head down into the speed and set this to about 1000 and increase the life to 2 seconds. Okay, so head back to the start of the timeline and round preview. So it's starting to look pretty nice, but it still needs some variation. In the animation shot, we'll place in some fractal noise and generate some random patterns. So before we do that, we'll lower the alpha by 10 so we don't have so many straight grey areas. So head back into the animation shot and turn off the mask plane. Go ahead and place a new plane in the same dimensions. And keep it black. Go ahead and place this under the organic picture. And up in the effects tab, search in effects for fractal. Place it onto your new plane. Drop down the fractal effects properties. And the first thing we're going to do is keyframe the seed. Move all the way to the end of the timeline and set this to 30. Turn on your sub settings and just bring the scale down by 10%. Now, down into appearance, go down to offset and bring this down to minus 5. And on the exposure, bring this up to 0 0.90. Go ahead and set this plane to add. Right click, blend, add. Turn back on the mask plane and head back into Composite Shot 1. Okay, so I'm using the entire timeline, and my frame rate is 30 frames per second. So from the entire timeline, that's 900 frames. To enable this procedural generation to take effect, we're simply going to set the number of frames to that of the entire timeline, which is 900. So set this to 900, and just be aware that now we're using procedural generation, processing of each frame is going to start getting very heavy. So let's do a quick round preview and see how it looks so far. Okay, it's starting to look pretty good now, so let's just go ahead and render this out. So now you have the first shot rendered into an image sequence. We can then start adding some cool details. For this, we'll use the fractal generation to produce clouds. So head back into your animation shot, and in your mask plane, select the mask and widen the select. And we don't need the organic material anymore, so we can turn this off. Head back over into composite shot 1. It's going to be pretty interesting to see how this all turns out. So again, render this out into an image sequence, and then we can move on to compositing this all together. So the outcome wasn't too bad, considering the resolution was 800 by 800 for this tutorial. But for the example at the beginning of the tutorial, 
The resolution was far more detailed at around 1600 in height, and by doing so it allowed for much higher detail imagery. That's pretty much it for organics. Remember there's no magic number in these tutorials and ultimately it's down to you to produce something cool. When you get used to setting up the emitter and the animation shot, increase the resolution and use images of greater detail. So I hope you like this tutorial and join us in part 3 where we start to look at some of the old classics.